Um, so once again, thank you everyone for joining us and very big welcome to Jane. So um, Jane Britt is the policy and advocacy team leader at Blind Citizens Australia, a national representative organization of people who are blind or vision impaired. Jane held the role of national policy officer with BCA for over two years prior. Jane lives with low vision and is also profoundly deaf in one ear. While her vision and hearing loss were challenges, she hasn't let it slow her down. And today she also works as a disability consultant and freelance writer for the Australian Disability Clearinghouse on education and training on the subjects of equity, diversity and inclusion in the tertiary sector. Jane is a graduate of Vision Australia's Graduate Start Program in Innovation or in Service Innovation and Design. She is a current non-executive director of Queenslanders with Disability Network. So a very busy woman. So thank you so much for joining us today and taking the time um, to talk us through such an important topic. Thank you very much. And thank you for having me here today. I'm going to uh, start sharing my screen. Uh, just to guide through the presentation that I have for you all today. Thanks, Jane. All right, so I will talk to what I do have on the screen, uh, just for the benefit of anyone who may not be able to see it. Uh, so this is just my title page, a presentation on concessions for people who are blind or vision impaired. I am Jane Bridge. Uh, as was just mentioned, I'm policy and advocacy team leader at Blind Citizens Australia. I'll talk a little bit more about what we do in a second. But firstly, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. I'd like to acknowledge the First Nations people as the original inhabitants or the traditional custodians of the land, wherever you may be today. I acknowledge our elders past, present and emerging. As we gather for this physically dispersed meeting, let us take a moment to reflect upon the meaning of place and in doing so recognise the various traditional lands on which we gather today. Today I'm going to cover uh, four main areas around concessions for people who are blind or vision impaired. There may be some others that you do have questions about or indeed you might have some questions about the ones that I do cover. And if you do, uh, feel free to ask those at the end and I'll see what I can do about answering them. Uh, the four ones that I thought I would take you through today are the taxi subsidy scheme, vision impaired travel passes, disability support pension or age pension blind, and finally the companion card. All right, so a little bit about the organisation that I work for. Uh, blind Citizens Australia is a national peak advocacy organisation. Our mission is to inform, empower and connect Australians who are blind or vision impaired and the wider community. We have a membership of approximately 2,700 members and our board and staff are comprised of over 75% uh, of people who are blind or vision impaired. So the types of concessions available. So the vision impaired travel passes, uh, these are available nationally, but they are state and territory issued. Um, the taxi subsidy scheme is also state and territory issued, but it is available nationally as well. The disability support pension blind or age uh, pension blind is national and is controlled by one central application, which we will get to. And the companion card is national, but they are state and territory issued, although the application process looks quite similar for each one of them in each state and territory. And I've just realized I put an incorrect number there. It should be one, vision impaired travel passes. Uh, so, I'll just do a quick whip around the country to talk a little bit about the different types of vision impaired travel passes that are available. So in Queensland, uh, the vision impaired travel pass is what it is called. It has a slightly different name in each place, but it is essentially the same thing. In Queensland, uh, vision impaired travel pass holders can travel on all TransLink services, excluding AirTrain and regional QConnect buses for free. In New South Wales, it's called a vision impaired persons or VIP travel pass. It entitles you and your attendant, if applicable, to travel free on public transport in New South Wales. In the ACT, it's a vision impaired travel pass, so very similar name so far, entitles you to free travel on transport Canberra buses and light rail services. In Victoria, it's a vision impaired travel pass. You can travel free on metropolitan trains, trams, 
and buses, V-line trains and coaches, regional town buses, regional services that have a contract or service agreement with Public Transport Victoria. So it's pretty widespread across the Victorian transport network. In South Australia, it's a vision impaired travel pass or it's called Metro Card Special Pass. It entitles you to free travel on Adelaide Metro buses, uh, trans, trans, uh, trains and trams. And in Western Australia, it's the Western Australian Vision Impairment Travel Pass. And to set this up, it's a bit different to the rest of the other states where you tend to go to your transport authority to get the information about applying for it. In Western Australia, you go to the different blindness service providers. So you can go to Visibility, to Vision Australia or Census Australia to get that set up. They will help you with the process of applying for it. In the Northern Territory, it's a vision impaired travel pass and it allows travel on the Territory's urban public bus network for free. So that was a pretty quick run around the country. Um, all right, so we'll go to the uh, to the uh, age pension blind or the uh, disability support pension blind. If you are uh, 66 years and six months and legally blind, so if you're under that age, you're eligible for the disability support pension blind. If you're aged 66 years and six months or older and legally blind, you're eligible for the age pension blind. These are two different uh, pensions and essentially they operate quite similarly to, the, to each other. Uh, according to advice given when con contacting about the age pension, it is a similar remuneration on, across both. But in both instances, if you want to apply for it, you will need to provide an optometrist or ophthalmologist report. Um, you can find out more about this at Services Australia. Um, we do know that the process is a little bit tricky, so it's something I certainly will come back to towards the end about talking about where we have done some advocacy with some of our clients. It's worth noting uh, contacting your suppliers of electricity, water, gas, telecommunications or internet providers if you are on either of these concessions and talking about concession rebates. They're often available to concession card holders, so it's really worth uh, finding that out. And then I'll just go to the companion card. So the companion card is issued by state or territory governments. And it's a program which promises fair ticketing for people with disability who need significant attendant care to su and support to attend venues and participate in community events and recreational activities. So when buying a ticket for venues and public transport services, a companion card holder is issued to a second companion ticket at no charge. So they just, you get your ticket and then your companion has a ticket at no charge. So they can accompany you to whatever event it is. That the cost of that second ticket will be met by the business of whatever you are attending. The access criteria from state to state is generally uh, close to this, being a resident of the state or territory and being an Australian citizen or resident, having a disability, because of the impact of the disability, be unable to participate at most community venues or activities without attendant care and support, and need or be likely to need lifelong attendant care support. So this is a pretty, uh, there is a little bit of uh, variation between the states and territories around this criterion, but it is roughly uh, falls into line with those particular things that I just listed. I'm just jumping back to, I just had some slides disappear and I'm not quite sure where they have gone. So I'm just going to get to my notes so I can uh, talk through taxi subsidy schemes. So these ones are available all around the country, but they're issued um, by state and territory governments and they have different names. So in Queensland, it's the taxi subsidy scheme. Eligibility is under category three, total loss of vision or severe vision impairment. The subsidy is up to $25 maximum per fare of $50. Uh, membership lasts five years. In New South Wales, um, it, there's a specific criterion around vision loss. So it's total loss of vision in both eyes or severe permanent impairment of six over 60 or less in both eyes. Or a field of vision that is reduced to 10 degrees or less or total loss of lower half of vision which cannot functionally be improved by corrective lenses or treatment. 
or homogeneous hemianopia with significant mobility limitations. Uh, so the New South Wales one is the taxi transport subsidy scheme, subsidy up to 50% to a maximum fare of $60. Uh, it must have a severe and permanent disability. Uh, that is a vision impairment of the criteria I just went through. Something to note with New South Wales is they've just recently implemented a smart card. Uh, it's not something that all the drivers are across yet, but it's certainly something which is in operation. And uh, if you do find any difficulties with that, I can talk to you a little bit about that at the end of some advocacy we've done around that as well. In Victoria, uh, it's a multi-purpose taxi program or the MPTP. It includes OI and Uber, which are two ride share companies as well. This is the only state or territory that's implemented this so far. Um, it was done on a trial basis and it's worked quite well. So they've just introduced it for those two companies to start with. The subsidy is 50% up to $60. And criteria includes severe permanent disability and you must be unable to use public transport. That is a criterion that you see across a lot of the states and territories. In South Australia, uh, people who are legally blind and, uh, are able to travel independently at all times on public transport are ineligible. So it's very similar to Victoria where you have to prove that you are using the transport all the time. Uh, cannot use the public transport and are using taxis instead rather. So the South Australian taxi subsidy scheme is what that's called. It's a 50% subsidy and criteria includes sensory impairment. Um, in Western Australia, it's a taxi user subsidy scheme or TUS, T U S. -S, -S. Uh, you must have a vision disability. A vision disability refers to confined, confirmed diagnosis of legal blindness. Um, standard subsidy is 50% here. And in the Northern Territory, it's a transport subsidy scheme assessed by a health professional as having a permanent or long-term disability, longer than six months, unable to safely use public transport due to your disability as well. You'll find that with a lot of these different states and territories, there'll be different uh, nuances around a medical criterion and what kind of information they require. So it's really worth getting in touch with um, the different bodies and finding out a little bit more information. All right, I'll now jump through to that my end slide with just a bit of information about what we do and going back to some of the advocacy cases I've talked about and mentioned throughout the presentation. So Blind Citizens Australia provides advocacy support and we would be happy to work with you if you require advocacy support for concessions access. So some of the things that we have done work with um, people around so far is when people apply for the disability support pension blind or age pension blind, um, a lot of people have found it quite difficult to access the forms and to you know, effectively navigate the application process. We are able to assist with that um, and we're quite happy for you to get in touch with us. I will go through information about how to get in touch with us in a little bit. Another uh, form of advocacy we have done recently is more systemic advocacy. So in, New South, in Queensland rather, uh, the taxi subsidy scheme was coming up for expiry in October, 2022. We're currently engaged in advocacy in Queensland with a few different Queensland disability organisations around that being extended. Uh, last year it was supposed to expire in October, 2021, but advocacy made it extend for another 12 months. Um, I had news yesterday that that is going to be extended as well. So just waiting for a bit more information around confirmation on that one. Uh, some other cases that we have assisted with uh, might be slightly to the side of, you know, the sort of concessions that we're talking about, where someone might be having difficulty accessing an electricity bill or a gas bill because it's inaccessible format for you. So it may not be large print, it may not be a braille document. Uh, we can help with uh, working with your provider around access for that. We've certainly done quite a few of those in the telecommunications space. Uh, I guess that uh, probably brings me fairly well to the end of uh, where we are, um, you know, in, as terms of different concessions that are available to you. There are some others that are out there, uh, certainly, and I'd be quite happy to take questions and try and answer those if I can. And if you would like to get in touch with Blind Citizens Australia about anything you've heard today, 
or if you would like advocacy support around getting access to some of these things or if you're having problems with them, um, we can be contacted by phone on 1800 033660 or by email at bca. At, sorry, I'll start that again, BCA for Blind Citizens Australia at bca.org.au. That's bca at bca.org.au. We provide support nationally in all states and territories. We don't do face-to-face -face support, but we certainly will provide remote support to anyone, no matter where they are in Australia. And we'd be quite happy to work with you, uh, no matter what uh, situation you might be experiencing around um, access to concessions. I'd be happy to um, pass back over to Natasha, Natasha now. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. If you just stop sharing, I'll then just share my screen. Um, so we might just launch straight into some questions that have been coming through. So thank you so much, Shane. That was that was great. And also really great to know the differences between um, all of the states. So I had a few questions that I wrote down as well, but I'll definitely go through some of the audience questions too. So while I'm reading um, some of those out for Jane to answer, just a little reminder for anyone tuning in live, if you wanted to type in a question that maybe came up through the presentation, um, just to click on that little Q&A icon, which is along that black bar, that will open up that white window, that white pop-up screen, type in the question. Remember to send it anonymously if you don't want your name to show up um, and then click that send button. So I'll just shop, stop sharing. So it's just um, myself and you, Jane, up on the screen. Um, so one of the questions that came through, let me just bring it up. Um, so someone's written, hi, Jane, thank you for this very informative presentation. Is the vision impaired travel pass just for those who are classified as legally blind? Yeah, so the definition will uh, vary by state or territory. Uh, there is quite nuanced um, medical criterion. I know certainly in some states it will be around legal blindness. In other states it can be around legal blindness in one eye. Um, for example, it will be around also your functional capacity. So if you're not uh, accessing public transport and this, this is the only method you're using to get around, then that is probably a criterion that they'll take into account as well. Great. And then in terms of classifying legal blindness, um, would that be done or performed by an ophthalmologist or an optometrist? Yes, generally they require that kind of information. Uh, for the vision impaired travel passes, I believe off memory it can be either, but I certainly would go down to the information on state or territory about that. It does vary between place to place around the application process. Okay, and we've, we've had a question come in asking the same um, for the taxi subsidy scheme. Mm. Do I have to be assessed by an ophthalmologist to be eligible? Yeah, I, I would believe so. Uh, I certainly am happy to go back and check that for sure. Uh, but there is definite um, medical, you know, uh, certification required. Yeah, absolutely. Um, someone's written in, oh, Jennifer, um, thanks for the question. Hello, would my New South Wales, for example, concession be usable in other states? Great question. Yeah, I guess it. Um, I, I would like probably clarification around exactly which concession you mean there. Um, in terms of the travel pass, it, there is for the taxi subsidy purposes interstate ability for use. And I'm told by my colleagues that you have to get um, the actual interstate vouchers to use those when you travel. Mm -hmm. um, there is information usually hosted on state and territory, um, you know, websites that actually are the ones that administer the applications for these particular concessions that would tell you more about that. Um, I, I know from colleagues that have been traveling between the states that they have been able to use their um, you know, taxi subsidy in some states. The vision of had travel pass, I believe there is certainly an agreement between ACT and New South Wales around that. Perfect, thank you. Um, so just, I might just run through a few questions that I wrote down, if that's okay, just while yeah, we're sure. getting a few more from the audience. So I guess just around the taxi subsidy scheme, you mentioned there was the smart card now. 
Mm. Can you maybe just give us a bit of an idea of how that works compared to what's currently being used? Sure. So most states and territories have moved to a smart card already. In New South Wales, they were the last um, state to move from paper. So previously you would have filled, um, half the docket would be filled out and the other half would be filled out and be ripped out. You would get a receipt that way. Now it's more like a credit card style where it gets tapped, like a F-plus card gets um, loads of tapping go. Mm -hmm. um, in that way, the subsidy is recorded off your um, card and then the other part would be paid by credit card or by cash. That's much easier than writing out that, that paper form. Yeah, and what they did find is when they decided to implement this, that they found it was a lot safer for people mm -hmm. who are blind in that you can actually um, handle the transaction yourself, hold the card and tap it, as opposed to having all your trust in someone filling out that um, particular docket for you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, and also just one question that I wrote down again on the companion card. Um, so can you give an example of maybe some of the different venues or the different ways that that companion card can be used? Yeah, sure. So uh, some of the ways it can be used would be at a cinema. For example, a lot of the national cinemas will take it and allow uh, someone to come in with you as an attendance. So you would get your ticket and they would get their ticket um, as your companion for free. And in that way, you'd be able to go and see maybe an audio described movie um, that's available. Another place where it can be used would be like a performing arts centre. I'll take, for example, in Brisbane, the Queensland Performing Arts Centre or Sydney, the Sydney Opera House. If you want to go to a concert uh, it, as a venue that does agree to the companion card scheme, they will, uh, you know, you will pay for your ticket. The companion card will be free and you'll be able to both go to that. Uh, most places will stipulate a rule around that, that you have to be together. So you have mm. to be seated side by side, uh, which obviously is also helpful for you if you are doing sighted guide, for example, with the person. And um, I've, I've found that a lot of places will have a separate phone line for that. So it might be an accessibility line. For example, with the Queensland Performing Arts Centre, there's a QTIX accessibility line that you ring to actually make that booking with your companion card. That's great. So I guess if someone was interested in attending a venue, they would look for the accessibility support number on the venue's website. Yes, and if you can't find it or you can't find information about whether they accept companion card, it'd be worth contacting them directly, mm. phoning the venue and seeing whether they are one of the um, places which will accept companion card. Great. And is there a list of all the venues somewhere on the internet of, of the I have certainly seen a compiled list somewhere. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't remember where, but I have seen a list where it did at least the major providers. Um, there yeah, may be great. some smaller like tourist attractions and things that will take it as well. Okay. And as well, I guess with the companion card, it's issued to the person who has um, the vision impairment. So it doesn't have to be the same companion each time. Yes, that's right. So it'll be, you know, issued to the person who has the vision impairment, you will have your name on it and you will have your own membership number. So a lot of places will even say that. Um, and so then it will just be, the companion can be someone different. So for example, you had a support worker that fell ill with COVID and you had another support worker come with you, it'd still be fine. That's awesome. Thanks, Jane. So I'll jump back to some of the live questions coming in. Um, so Janine's just written in just off the back of Jennifer's question. Um, so as Janine says, I'm in Victoria and my GP filled in the form for the multi-purpose taxi program, which I got. So thanks for that, Janine. Okay, thank you. Excellent. That's really helpful information to know. Um, another anonymous attendee has written in, I'm not legally blind, but seeing a computer screen is difficult in a work situation. This has been my career. Am I able to get... Uh, just a disability pension with a report from the ophthalmologist? Yeah, it would be dependent on what the medical assessment uh, was for that. Um, you may be eligible for, if you're not eligible for disability support pension blind, you may be eligible for the disability support pension, which um, the difference is it's a more of a historical distinction. The disability support pension blind came in as a as distinction around returning veterans. Uh, and so that distinction has remained. Uh, the 
support pension blind is not means tested, but the disability support pension is. Um, that is probably the primary difference between them, uh, but also so is the medical criterion that is around both. It, it would be worth um, contacting Centrelink directly and, and having a discussion about that, or even with your medical, um, you know, wh whoever your medical doctors are around, whether, whether that would be something that would be helpful. Another thing I also I'd like to mention here, you just talked about work and I don't know if you know about job access which is a um, particular thing that's available for people with disabilities for workplaces to get workplace adjustments um, for disabilities so they will help provide equipment and you know aids that might help you in the workplace so for example if, if you're struggling with the computer screen it might be about uh, you know funding a magnifier or screen reader so you can hear things being read out that might help alleviate some of that thanks Jane I think if that hasn't answered the question if you just want to type in a follow-up question yeah. is that anonymous I thought that was helpful yeah, thank, thank you, you. Um, uh, Janine again has just written in my husband's nephew works for the taxi directorate and he told me never to leave my card with the driver to make sure I take it at the end of the trip. Yeah, definitely. I, I um, you know, make sure you do get that back. Um, I, the trick I always have is uh, to remember to count two cards before I get out of the car. If I'm not carrying two cards, then I, I wait to make sure I have two cards in my hand before I exit. That's great. Well, I think that's um, all the questions. Someone's written in. Thank you. Very helpful. That was our anonymous attendee from before. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that helped. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, Shane. I found that um, really insightful and, um, yeah, really appreciate your time coming on today. You're very busy with other things, but thanks for taking the time to have a chat. Yeah, um, thank you. Before we finish, I'll just quickly run through just some of the work that um, MDFA has been doing. So I'll go back to sharing my screen. Here we are. So, um, so here at MDFA, um, our goal is to reduce the incidence and impact of macular disease. And we do this um, through four main pillars. Um, so the first one is the prevention early detection, which is raising awareness to early signs of macular disease to prevent it um, get, uh, getting to a point where it does start to affect um, vision and daily life. We also provide support and services to people in the early stages or later stages of macular disease. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, on the next slide of how you can access these support and services. Our third pillar is the advocacy work that we do. So very similar to BCA, we do a lot of work um, in the advocacy space, making sure that there's a voice for the macular disease community in Australia. And finally, the research and data that we do um, is all a part of the research grants program that's funded through donations that we receive. And it goes towards funding um, Australian research in the macular disease space. So to access our free support and services, um, you can do it in a few different ways. So firstly, we have the 1-800-111-709 helpline number that you can call um, to chat to any of our educators. So all of our educators are either vision scientists or optometrists. And we provide non-clinical and uh, advice and support all around macular disease. You can also connect with us via our email, which is on the screen as education at mdfoundation.com.au or jumping onto our website, www.mdfoundation.com.au. So on our website, you can access all of our free resources, our past webinars, register for upcoming webinars, as well as access a range of translated resources. At the conclusion of this webinar, as always, you'll receive a survey in um, your inbox. So it's a really great way for us to get feedback um, on how uh, the webinar was today. Um, also, it's a really good opportunity for you to share any future topics that you would like to hear more of. Or maybe if you really enjoyed this one, um, a prompt for us to do more just like this. It would also be a really good way for you to access the previous webinars on our YouTube channel and sign up for future webinars. So I'll stop sharing. Thank you so much again, Jane, for um, taking the time to chat with us and we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you.